Hey guys, so when we talk about archaeology, we often imagine people with shovels and brushes digging in the ground looking for ancient artifacts. However, mysterious discoveries are waiting both on land and underwater, and we don't just mean sunken ships, but entire cities. So today we're going to talk about the most surprising discoveries that were found on the sea floor. The Spanish Galleon, San Jose. This very valuable discovery of the early 18th century Spanish Galleon was found comparatively recently on the floor of the Caribbean Sea in 2015, not far off of Colombia. The ship was discovered in a region near Isla Baru that was previously unresearched. The San Jose was about 2,000 feet below the sea and partially covered in silt. A galleon is a large multi-deck sailing vessel from the 16th to 18th centuries with fairly strong cannons and was used for both military operations and for trade and transport. But it's not the ship itself that's valuable here. It's the cargo. This ship was part of the Spanish Golden Armada and was loaded with gold, silver, gems, and jewelry that were collected from the South American colonies to be sent back to the Spanish king in Europe. The 60 cannon San Jose sank in 1708 after a battle with British ships that tried to steal the valuable cargo. During the battle, some gunpowder in the cargo hold exploded and the ship sank to the ocean floor, and only 11 out of hundreds of crew members were saved. The autonomous Deepwater Remus 6000 robot was used to search for the galleon. This robot was previously used to observe the legendary Titanic, and in 2011, the Remus was used to find pieces of the Air France 447 flight plane that broke over the Atlantic off the coast of Brazil in 2009. The underwater robot stopped 30 feet above the seafloor and started taking pictures. The pictures clearly showed dolphins that decorated the armored ship cannons. This is the detail that provided the sunken galleon's exact identification. Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos Calderon announced the discovery and said a museum would be built to show off the artifacts that included gold, coins, silver, emeralds, and other gems and jewelry. At today's exchange rate, and according to American company Sea Search Armada, the cargo is worth $2 billion, and that's no joke. Another galleon, the Nuestra Señora de Atocha, belonging to the Golden Armada, was discovered by Fisher in the 1970s. Gems and jewels were raised that were worth $450 million, and that was just part of the cargo. While scientists are discussing the best way to raise the San Jose, politicians are debating who the treasures belong to. Colombia says Colombia, since the ship was found in its waters. But Spain says, since it was their ship in the 18th century, it still belongs to them, even centuries later. Peru and Bolivia also have claims since the gold and silver were from their lands. In 2019, the new Colombian president announced that all operations on the shipwreck were frozen until all legal complications were solved. Dwaraka the legendary city of gold and the ancient capital of Krishna is now on the seafloor, even though just 40 years ago, stories about this city were considered nothing more than legend. Geological research and aerial photography confirm the evidence from the ancient stories and tell us that several thousand years ago, there was an unseen catastrophe on the coast of Gujarati. It seems that Dwarka was flooded by immense tsunamis that ripped huge stones from the walls of the city. Tales of the ancient city that went under the waves have troubled Indian archaeologists for a very long time. Originally, searches were held on the ground where the coast was fairly wide and where hundreds of yards of the seafloor were visible during low tide. The searches were difficult because the water would be lower only three or four hours a day, and doing any serious digging in such conditions was almost impossible. Nevertheless, they were able to find the remains of buildings that cropped up. They found stone foundations, ceramic fragments, and seashell items. Later, the research ship Vidvati came to Dwarka outfitted with equipment for underwater work, echo sounders, air pumps, lifts, and other things. The research continued in a very difficult environment 
not fit for humans. The sea was rough, and the team had a hard time. However, the research went on, and ancient Duarca revealed its secrets more and more. Moorings, a damaged marble statue, a copper bell, bronze details on an ancient cart, a cylindrical column with a square base, and a small storage with 30 copper coins were all found in the following weeks. But the most surprising discoveries were stamps that showed a three-headed beast with the heads of a bull, a goat, and a rhino, which corresponds to the ancient legend's description. The stamps were carefully dated to the early 2nd millennium BCE. However, they may be much older. Research of the sunken city continues to this day. Ancient Heracleon was hidden under the ground by an earthquake about 1,300 years ago and was accidentally found in 2000 by French underwater archaeologist Frank Gorillo while searching for Napoleon's fleet. He announced that he had discovered city ruins about 30 feet deep that he thought belonged to the semi-mythical Heracleon, the Temple of Heracles that Herodotus mentions. According to references in the writings, the city was a large center of trade in the Mediterranean, and searches for the missing city were held for many years. When experts had almost lost hope of finding it, news started coming from Abu Kirbe, that is close to Alexandria in Egypt. One of the first things found was the temple complex with three huge statues made out of rose granite found next to its destroyed walls. The statues were supposedly damaged in the earthquake. Two statues show the pharaoh and his wife, and the third is Hapi, the Egyptian god of the Nile. The monumental dual-language stela of Ptolemy VIII was found in the temple. It weighs 10 tons, is 20 feet tall, and 10 feet wide. When it was discovered, it was broken into 15 pieces, and its surface is still difficult to read. However, a preliminary translation of the text on the lower pieces shows that it is without a doubt a temple to Heracles. Many scientists, including Manfred Klaus from the Frankfurt University, suppose that the final translation will reveal even more. Additionally, a six-foot granite steel with an order from the pharaoh is an almost complete copy of the so-called Naucratis Stella found in 1899 in Naucratis. This was the first doubled stella in Egyptology. Godio's team also found the place where the Heraclean harbor was. It now houses the wrecks of at least 76 ships, with 12 of them being identical and 85 feet long from bow to stern. Experts suppose that they sunk from an aftershock wave after the earthquake. Researchers have also found over 700 moors in excellent condition. In its time, all ships heading onward to the Nile and to Egypt were required to stop in Heraclea. The crews unloaded their cargo, it was evaluated and taxed, and then by could continue sailing up the river. Everywhere the researchers looked in the underwater city, they found various objects that are dated to the 1st century BCE and earlier. Most of them are in good condition, despite being underwater for thousands of years. Over time, the excavation of the city has revealed many items, like statues, sarcophagi, golden earrings, bracelets, rings, crests, cubes, as well as thousands of coins. According to Dr. Frank Godio, 200 years won't be enough to excavate this city and reveal all its secrets. Atlas Yam Not far off the coast of Israel in the Mediterranean Sea, an ancient settlement was found that, according to modern experts, is at least 9,000 years old. What happened in this settlement is still a mystery. It's possible life ended in Atlit Yam in a moment. This place is 33 feet below the sea and is almost 10 acres in size. The ruins were discovered in 1984 by naval archaeologist Ehud Gali, and underwater excavations have been revealing buildings, graves, and skeletons ever since. The center of the settlement has seven stone monoliths in a semicircle in front of a freshwater spring that may have been a place for religious rituals. The unique granular bottom of the Haifa region preserved the structures excellently for thousands of years. The sunken city is so well-preserved that researchers were able to find a completely intact ancient cemetery in the city 
and residential structures revealed insects that bothered the citizens thousands of years ago. Now, judging by the finds, the locals were herders and fishers. The biggest mystery in the Atlit Yam ruins is why it sunk. Many researchers think the settlement just gradually went underwater because of melting glaciers and the world ocean growing. Others think there was an unexpected tsunami. The Uluburun Shipwreck This sunken ship was accidentally discovered by divers on the seafloor near Turkish Antalya in 1982. And the discovery astounded scientists then. They needed over 10 years to carefully raise the pieces of the ship from 140 feet underwater to the surface, and only then were they able to fully evaluate the ship. That's when they realized it was a Finnish ship that was sunk by the dangerous Uluburn rocks in southern Turkey around 1316 BCE. Now, despite the impressive age, the ship's interior, from the furniture to the unbelievable cargo, was well-preserved. Just imagine, the Bronze Age trade ship was carrying six tons of copper bars that may have been mined in Cyprus, as well as tin goods and ingots, Canaanite dishes containing butter, glass beads, and tree resin. They also found Baltic amber, possibly delivered to the Mediterranean by land, lumber from an ebony tree from Africa, elephant and hippo ivory, and ostrich eggshells from North Africa. There were also Egyptian, Lebanese, and Mycenaean knives, swords, spearheads, and axes on board. It had expensive glass beads, Mesopotamian cylindrical stamps, Mycenaean stone for printing, and even a golden cup. The ship was transporting Egyptian scarabs, dozens of fish, fish hooks, and 23 stone anchors that were critical for stopping in windy storms. Thanks to these discoveries, experts were able to judge the extent of international trade at that time. By the way, let me know what you would do if you found gold on the ocean floor. Would you keep it, or would you give it away for study? Well, that's all for today. Be sure to leave a like and uh, we'll see you again next time.